So after spending like two hours going through customs to cross the border from Uzbekistan back into Kazakhstan for the third time, we finally ended up getting off the train at like 4 a.m. And we get off. And lo and behold, there's two other travelers that got off as well from a different train car. And they come up and ask us like, oh, hey, where are you guys heading? And we're like, oh, we're heading to the Caspian Sea. We're gonna take the boat. And they were like, no way, we are too. So that was kind of cool. And we both kind of just ended up chatting for a little while and then went on our way. They were going to find like a cafe to hang out in. And I was like, Let's find a hotel. Yeah, so we paid for a hotel to sleep in it during the day so that we could leave again at nighttime. Yeah, because the, <laughs> so our next train didn't leave until 6 p.m. And we literally got hardly any sleep the night before. So I was like- Two nights I, before. Yeah. Three for, nights before. For the past two or three nights. So I was yeah. like, I need to sleep. Like, I don't even care. Let's get a hotel. And so we found a hotel that would let us get a room for the day. It was slightly cheaper than Getting yeah, a room yeah, for the it's night. like five dollars off. Yeah, it was totally worth it to be able to sleep and shower. We were so disgusting after two days of like sitting on that hot, sweaty train. Ugh. So we prepped to get on another hot, sweaty ass, miserable train. Yep. We that sure was going to go all night as well. Yeah. It was another twelve hours on. Yeah, twelve hours yeah. on miserable train ride. This yeah. time in in Uzbekistan, the bike was no problem. This mm -hmm. time we had the kind of whatever in Scam. not engineer but they scammed us and it was like you gotta pay for your bike on this train it's like why should we pay for the bike on the train it it's was the on the other train yeah. for free it's the same exact train yeah it's going in the same spot on the same train yeah i shouldn't have to pay for it but i'm yeah, whatever it was like 10 bucks no he to wanted to charge us like 20 dollars yeah 20 or 30 dollars like a ridiculous amount and i said hell no we are not paying that and i literally said we just took this train, like just 12 hours ago, and our bikes were no problem. And as soon as I said that, magically he cut the price in half. That's how you know it's a scam, because there's no set price. It wasn't like, oh, this is the price that we charge for bicycles on the train. He was just trying to scam and get money out of us. So ideally we would have paid nothing, but I got the price cut in half, so good enough. We got our bikes on the train. We spent another 12 hours this time though we were sat kind of i guess across the aisle from like this really awesome kazakh family who ended up like sharing all their food with us and all their kids wanted to take photos with us and yeah we had lots of good melon yeah lots of good melon and tea and yeah so that was really nice kind of a cool like local experience mm -hmm. and then after that when we were trying to go to sleep justin was on the top bunk again and of course he doesn't get bothered at all but I have like the train lady who grabbed some other local girl who could speak English to come up and ask me to cover myself because the men who were sitting like in the booth next the next booth next down they yeah, had the a, booth they down. had a sheet covering the side but he was doing his Muslim prayer yeah they were doing some like Muslim prayer or something it was prayer and time one of you there five times a day they're supposed to do yeah so apparently day. they were very religious. And I don't know, clearly my presence in, in this outfit, th this very skimpy outfit was offending them. So mm -hmm. she asked me to, if I could put my sheet over myself, which really pissed me off. And it wouldn't before like people are going to be it like, would, Oh my gosh, you're so culturally insensitive. Piss her off. Okay. It would, but it pissed me off extra because mm -hmm. of how hot it was. Like I was already overheated and now they're asking me to put a bed sheet on top of me. And I was literally like, are you kidding me? And I said to the lady, I'm like, it's so hot. Like, are you serious right now? And she was like, oh, it's just for like half an hour until they finish their prayer. And then I was like much better about it. The train lady who originally came up to me, like couldn't speak English that well. And she made it sound like they wanted me to like cover myself up for the entire 12 hours. And I was like, F no, like screw that. Unless you want me to die of dehydration. But then the other lady said, no, 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 just like half an hour. And like okay still pissed me off but 
It was doable. And I mean, it, Kazakhstan is not a Muslim country and never before had we had any issues or I had any issues with the way I was dressed. Women walk around all the time in shorts and short sleeves. So I would think I was just really taken aback. Like it wasn't like we were in a Islamic Don't state. Don't ever tell her what to do because she'll <laughs> curl up in a ball and tell you to f <laughs> Yeah, it's just a bad <laughs> plan. I'm an independent American, what can I say? So needless to say, the rest of that train ride, I felt pretty uncomfortable and was, I don't know, just kind of worried about these guys, like, staring at me, or I don't, I don't really know. Um, so I kind of just tried to be as discreet as possible. I would have rather, like, gone and put more of my own clothes on, but our trailer, which had our clothes in it, was, like, way out of the way. Like, I couldn't get to it. Yeah, it was in the back with the bike. Yeah, because I definitely had more comfortable stuff to cover, cover up rather than a really hot bed sheet, but I just couldn't get to it, so that was all right. We spent the 12 hours just kind of tried to sleep and ignore the situation, and then we once again got off the train at like 4 a.m. 4 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Thank you, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, for never letting us sleep. Yeah, pretty much. So off we went on the bike ride to Kurik. The port used to be in Oktau, and then they moved it out to the middle of nowhere. Yeah, like 90, it was 90k, wasn't it, to <laughs> it was the port? A, it was a pretty long ride, but at least it was flat. And cool, because we left we were at in, yeah. 5 a.m. We <laughs> figured since it was already just before sunrise, we might as well just cycle while it was cool out, and then we could sleep when we got there. picked up at the end of the day made the last 15k across the peninsula to mm -hmm. Kurik just miserable <laughs> moving along at like 10 or 11 kilometers an hour on a flat road yeah sucks but we did eventually make it there going bumbling through all the the stupid no information we found the hotel that's at the port which was not at all obvious yeah, it's in nothing's obvious. They they build these nice, beautiful buildings with very poor signage, mm -hmm. and nobody knows where where to go. Yeah. But we we found the hotel, slept in there for a while, then asked where where do we go to get on the boat, and like right around there. It's like we don't know where right around there is. Please take us. <laughs> they took us. And we filled out some forms and sat around and scratched our head a bit. And then somebody showed up and it's like, oh, now we go in here. And we went in there and uh, filled out some forms, tried to pay some money, as, and we were in Kazakhstan now, but apparently paying for this was very confusing. It took them like 15, 20 minutes to process a cash payment. Yeah. A correct amount of cash payment. Who knows what they were doing? I think they were probably playing games on their phone. <laughs> Uh, we came out, and eventually we got our tickets, and then they're like, oh, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. You're, you're done in your hotel now. Go get your things and come back down to the port. And so we did. Kara wasn't very fast getting her things, and so they came up and was like, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Because I knew, okay, so we have lived and traveled around Asia for so long now. I know how things work. This it's a hurry up and wait thing. I knew the boat wasn't going to actually leave for hours more. 
But for some reason, they, it was all, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, we have to get down to the port right now. And lo and behold, we got down to the port and ended up waiting for two hours. <laughs> yeah, it was at least two hours. Yeah. Yeah. But we met a, another cool traveler, a Russian guy who we were talking to for a while, so that was fun. Yeah, we, so we passed the time with other travelers, which was nice. So I had heard from other cyclists and travelers that had taken this ferry across the Caspian Sea all sorts of horror stories about the ferry schedule because it basically is non-existent. So I had heard stories of people who had arrived at the ferry port and immediately gotten on the ferry and I'd heard stories of people who arrived at the ferry port and had to camp out there for five days before they could get on the ferry. So I went into this being like, all right, at least they built a brand new ferry port with a hotel and we'll just stay in the hotel for as long as we need to until we can get on the boat. And so I literally expected to be in that hotel for at least one night. And I was actually looking forward to being in that hotel for one night so we could actually get a normal night's sleep because it had been what? three or four days now? Of, four days of no sleep. Yeah, four days of getting woken up in the middle of the night for border crossings and public transport and all sorts of loveliness. And of course, what happens? We get on the boat that night at, once again, 2 a.m. <laughs> so it was awesome that we didn't have to wait for days for the ferry, but not so awesome that we now had another night of no sleep tacked on. All right, welcome to our home for the next 24 hours. We made it onto the boat on the Caspian Sea, and this is our cabin. I thought we'd give you guys a little cabin tour. It'll take about two seconds because it's about the size of a closet, but here we go. So you walk in, cabinets, our stuff, some of our stuff, And bathroom. Lovely, lovely, but at least there's a western toilet. And this is it. We've got four beds in bunk bed style and not very much room, but at least there's a window with a nice view. All right, and now it's time for lunch. took 24 hours or so to get across mm -hmm. the sea yep and on our way across about yeah we asked the ladies when are we gonna arrive they're like in the morning in the morning they're yeah they spe she specifically told me we will not be docking tonight yeah and so we were like sweet let's go to sleep yeah, and so we went <laughs> to sleep and at midnight the alarm rings oh we're going into port <laughs> we'll be there in 15 minutes pack your things uh. we're, <laughs> we're going we're done <laughs> Seriously. What a pain in the ass. Oh, so, yeah. So once again, another two hours of, because now we have to enter Azerbaijan from Kazakhstan. So another two hours of customs. And once again, we arrive into Azerbaijan at 2 a.m. Yeah. And we ride, I don't know, about a kilometer out of the port and camp on the side of the road. Yeah. It's we were like, like we've had enough. enough. I'm yeah. done. <laughs> Going to sleep. 
Yep, and then the next day we rode into Baku. Yeah. Short ride, but nasty. Short, but very windy. Nasty headwind all the way in. Oh. 